Howdy, folks. Colin Lay here with Lay Roots, still with Lay Roots, and still focusing asset protection. Boy, has it been quite a break since I've made video and feeling quite rested, honestly. Ready to talk about some more asset protection excitement. Recently, I was at a, a nerdy lawyer conference, a lot of great trust attorneys getting together to talk about things and learn new things. And one of the things that always surprises me in these crowds is those who talk or make these, these bold claims that people shouldn't do this high level asset protection planning, trust planning, unless they're doing fully offshore trusts, offshore assets, the whole thing, offshore trust protectors, everything offshore, as strong as you can get. And for a lot of these people, that makes sense. They have clients with 20 million, 50 million, $200 million. You know, the cost and upkeep of those plans just is fine for them. But what if you don't want to have that fully offshore plan. What if you want an asset protection plan, but you don't want to lose complete control of your assets? You don't want to have to comply with IRS reporting requirements, and you don't want to spend those high fees every year, trustees and, and tax returns. Should those people just, should they not bother? Should they not do any asset protection planning? Spoiler alert. I think they should. I think a lot of these attorneys forget or they don't know what asset protection is really about. A lot of these attorneys, I feel like, think that it's about going through years of litigation and having the judge declare that the trust they created for the client is an impenetrable fortress. They just imagine that judge saying to the other lawyer on the other side, sorry, sir, I wish I could seize these assets for you. But the defendant's asset protection attorney is just too good. Too good. But the clients I know, people that I've, that have gone through litigation, don't want to go through that whole process. They don't want to spend months and years fighting these cases. They want it to be over. I think what his attorneys are forgetting about is that asset protection is about leverage. It's about creating a situation that discourages litigation by creating obstacles and barriers, making it less enticing to come after you with a lawsuit, right? Because attorneys typically don't get paid unless they win and collect a judgment against you. So if they're not going to get paid, they don't move forward. Asset protection is about gaining leverage to encourage cheap settlements. Right? So you get a suit for 1.2 million, but you settle it for 10,000. You have your asset protection plan. They see that. The other side sees that. They don't want to deal with it. So they settle for 10,000. Go away. That's an example from someone we've worked with. They were in the midst of a legal claim. The other side knew they had a nice home or a million dollars or so. They could just, if they won, just take away from them. But this person set up an asset protection plan, put their house in the trust, went back to the uh, negotiation table, and they were able to settle that $10,000 settlement. They were able to come to that agreement. Now, all these attorneys at this nerdy lawyer convention would tell you that isn't going to work. It's too late to do any planning. It's real estate located in the U.S. It's it's not going to work. It's fully offshore. There's no offshore trustee settling for $10,000. Let me tell you, it's working. That's how it works. I think this highlights that asset protection 
as worthwhile and valuable to pursue, even if it's not fully offshore, for people who don't want to lose complete control of their assets, don't want to have to put up with IRS reporting requirements, want to keep those full costs reasonable, more reasonable, and also to have the option to convert their asset protection plan to be fully offshore if and when the need arises. Thanks for watching. See you next time.